myself. Is this a hopeless crusade? Have my actions led to the extinction of our people? Hello and welcome to something that's uh, kind of new, but also kind of old. I am Jeff Arbuckle, co-host of the Film Seizure Podcast. And uh, if you have been listening to our stuff for uh, these many months that we've been together, then you probably uh, remember uh, in that simpler time that was earlier this year before uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, something that we used to do here that I kind of started uh, in 2019 called Film Seizure at the Movies. Well, uh, it's kind of hard going to the movies these days, isn't it? So uh, what we've decided to do is to do something called uh, Film Seizure Streams the Movies because pretty much everything is now streaming. Uh, so... Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about what we have uh, coming up with that. But uh, before we get into this uh, this discussion of an 80s property that has been resurrected, I want to uh, do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, new episodes of Film Seizure every Wednesday. That's with myself, Jason Oliver, Chuck Moore. Uh, we are currently... Uh, finishing up our month-long look at the Star Trek movie sequels. So uh, Star Trek 2 through 6, uh, we just uh, finished that up. Starting uh, the first week of August, we have uh, an episode on The Prestige. So be sure to check that out. Every Monday, you can go over uh, to filmseizure.com and uh, listen to me talk about a monster movie with Monster Mondays. And then uh, Saturdays, I am uh, doing Double O Saturdays, where I write an article about uh, either a James Bond movie or uh, the musical motifs of a James Bond film. So that is still going throughout the rest of 2020. Uh, you can hear all of that stuff over at uh, filmseizure.com. You can go to SoundCloud, Spotify, uh, Google Podcast, uh, Apple Podcast, uh, Tune In. Uh, we upload stuff to YouTube uh, and Stitcher. So pretty much uh, a wide array of where you can get our stuff. So uh, let's talk about Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy. Chapter one, <laughs> Siege. Uh, that's a, that just rolls right off the tongue, right? Um, so a couple of things here. Uh, an earlier episode of Film Seizure, going back, uh, to the summer of 2018, I believe one of our more popular, most listened to episodes. We did an episode on, uh, transformers, the movie. Now I grew up a huge, huge transformers fan. I uh, had several of the, of the uh, toys I had. I actually liked transformers far more than I liked GI Joe. Um, I was probably in the minority on that. I think, uh, I know a lot of people who, preferred G.I. Joe. Now I'd watch G.I. Joe here and there, and I usually watch it because it was, I think the lead in the Transformers, they, they follow one followed the other. I don't remember exactly which one, but, uh, I, I was a huge Transformers fan. It, it fit my sensibilities. Uh, it also didn't hurt that I positively loved the Marvel comics for Transformers. Uh, I felt like the comics were so much more mature and I th I'm sure I talked about this with the um, Transformers the movie episode that we did. But uh, this, uh, it, it was just one of those things where it's like the comics had the opportunity to delve into uh, much more of the lore and some of the inner thinking of some of the characters that you didn't quite get to have on the TV show just because the TV show had to be geared for two things. One, a relatively young audience and two, uh, to make sure you were selling those, uh, <laughs> selling those toys. So, uh, but regardless, uh, I, you know, to be honest with you until more recently, I had not really gotten back into, uh, the transformers, uh, universe, if you will. Uh, but that kind of changed with the toy line that came out that uh, started in 2018 to accompany this 
series that just started on Netflix on July 30th. Um, so there was this series called the Transformers War for Cybertron. The first series was Siege, which is the first chapter of this trilogy. Um, and, uh, you know, that really got me back into the toys because it was really kind of seemingly a nostalgic take on um, a lot of that, what they call G1, that, that first uh, five years or so of the toys and really kind of uh, spotlighting uh, some of the things that made those characters aesthetically uh, pretty great for me. And I, you know, in, in the time, I've really kind of gotten back into the lore, really kind of gotten back into, um, you know, watching the TV, the old TV show, uh, even taking an interest in some of the Japanese shows that came out right after the original series. And, uh, you know, it, it was just uh, one thing I've always realized about Transformers is, is that oftentimes the aesthetic is what I am most nostalgic for, not necessarily the TV show and not necessarily the actual real toys. But that being said, uh, you know, now over 35 years later, there's a lot of things that they're doing with the toys that they couldn't have done back then. And, uh, the mechanics of it is, is, uh, something that's a lot more appealing to me. It's a lot cooler. They, uh, the toys can now look like the characters on the TV show, uh, and they can transform similarly. And I've got more to say about that here in just a moment, but Generally speaking, it was uh, this War for Cybertron trilogy uh, that really kind of got me back, really back into Transformers. Um, the main reason why I really kind of fell out of it, um, and it's important for me to kind of talk about this because of what this show and um, one other piece of Transformers media has really, really done well. But the reason why I really fell out of it was, was that uh, by the time you got into generation two, which was the mid nineties and then getting into beast wars, which was a, a huge departure, uh, of the, from the original aesthetic, I really kind of felt like I didn't really know the characters all that well. I didn't, um, I didn't really take to them being overly, uh, stylized in the 90s uh for the generation two i didn't really care much for them having uh beast modes uh, basically robots turning into animals uh that they had in the beast wars and by the time that the new millennium came around uh the the series was kind of you know uh, well most of it was coming from japan and a lot of it was targeting very young audiences and when there were when new stuff would be created over here it didn't it just didn't fit my sensibilities uh there are some places where i was absolutely wrong about that uh transformers animated as i've recently discovered has been a wonderful fun little show um but it is still aged downwards i had never really outside of the marvel comic and maybe some of the comics that idw has done uh for the better part of the last what 10 or 15 years now, um, I, I never really got much out of movies or TV shows or anything like that, that really fit that more mature feeling that more, um, uh, the, the feeling that I connect to with transformers. So now, uh, with this war for Cybertron series that came out from, uh, Netflix, uh, that's really kind of reignited a lot of this. Um, the, the, the first inkling that I had that maybe, maybe Transformers is something that I can get back into uh, was the Bumblebee movie. And, and what, that was 2018, I think, uh, right at the end of 2018. Um, so, you know, uh, the Michael Bay movies, the first one was fine for what it was. Uh, the second one was... Um, uh, to use a uh, to use a term loosely, it was dog shit. Um, the third one was uh, it, it too grim and gritty and too dark, and people were just being killed left and right. Chicago got killed, which I would have to assume a bunch of people got killed too. Um, it just and I didn't see the fourth or fifth one. Um, so and at that point, I thought, well, boy, Transformers seems to have kind of lost its way big time with me. 
Uh, but then the Bumblebee movie came along and I thought, wow, this feels like home set in the eighties. Uh, you know, it's got recognizable characters looking recognizable to me. I just really liked it. Um, and then the siege line came out right around the same time or started to come out right around the same time. And I found myself really being drawn back in. Um, so, uh, we had to keep kind of waiting for the series to come along. And I don't remember what all of the, uh, hangups were. I don't know if they were trying to get all three chapters of the trilogy completed before they released the first one. Uh, I'm not sure, but, uh, it took a long time to get here to the series being released today. But, um, I was a little surprised to hear that uh, some of the people, some of the Transformers uh, YouTube channels and stuff like that was a little bit more cautious than I was about it being a, a, a good show. Um, so I'll get to a little bit more about that here in just a minute. But uh, this show really gave me a lot of what I wanted uh, right from the get go. I felt like this was, uh, the right place for this to start. This is essentially taking um, everything that we saw in the first few pages of that Marvel comic in 1984, or the first maybe 20 minutes or first, I don't know, 15 minutes or so of the first episode of the eighties TV show and really kind of expanded upon it and aged it up a little bit. Uh, this show is not really for kids as much as, as it is for the parents of the kids who grew up on this stuff. Uh, this show is a little bit more, um, it is darker. Uh, it is something that, uh, does have a lot of grim, uh, outcome because, uh, this, the, the tone of this show is set during a horrific civil war. Um, and it's, uh, to give a little bit of background, I don't want to give too much, uh, spoilers on this because I assume if you're listening to this, you're probably a Transformers fan too. If not, uh, then, Hey dad, how's it going? Glad you're glad you tuned in for this. Uh, but I don't want to give too many spoilers because I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be spending the weekend watching this and, um, getting into it. The one piece of advice I would give is, uh, try to stream it from start to finish. Uh, because this mo this, these six episodes are built to almost be a two hour movie. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's broken up into six chapters, but they, they lead one right into the next one. So it's really just a two hour movie. And I would recommend you watch it all, you know, you watch it like that. Uh, but the, the background of this is, is that, um, Megatron and the Decepticons have already essentially won the war. It's a war of attrition at this point for the Autobots. Um, and where this all comes from is that the, uh, is, and it, it kind of goes into some stuff that's been explored in maybe some of the shows in the past, but certainly it, it's been explored, I think more in the IDW comics over the last several years. But, uh, the Autobots were a ruling class, uh, on Cybertron. They were not particularly great or kind. They were very, um, aristocratic, I guess would be the, the way to say it. Um, and they more or less used the Decepticons as slave labor and as glad uh, gladiators, uh, for their entertainment. Uh, Megatron led a rebellion and basically overthrew the ruling class. Um, now the Autobots that he is trying to squash out aren't the Autobots that ruled. So there is a little bit of a paradigm shift here, you know, the Decepticons were the, uh, were the ones that were basically in chains. Now they're the ruling class and they just want to eliminate the Autobots more or less. There's a little bit more to that than, uh, than what I just put, but, uh, that's really the setup and the Autobots are not in great shape. Uh, they are not warriors. They've never have been that, that goes back to the, to the eighties, um, to the very beginnings, the very roots of the show, the Autobots, uh, on the original TV show, uh, often said, well, we've never been, uh, <laughs> we've never been fighters. We've always, you know, they've always been people who have been, um, more of the, uh, of the kind hearted people. So now 
you have this uh, you have this war where the Autobots are underpowered and they don't have the the killer instinct that the Decepticons do. Um, and you know, all of the really, for the most part, the series is pretty much populated by the, the popular characters. You have your Optimus prime, you have Wheeljack, you have, um, Bumblebee, you have Ironhide and Prowl and all those people are on the Autobot side and over on the Decepticon side, you have, you know, Megatron, of course you have Starscream, um, you have Shockwave, Soundwave, all those popular guys. That So they're all here. Everybody that you would want to see are here looking like you want them to look like. If you're a fan of the original G1 Transformers uh, and, the, and the series from the 80s, I think you'll appreciate the look and um, attitudes of some of these characters. Uh, Starscream, of course, is duplicitous. Uh, he actually has... Uh, a lot, uh, a lot to do in this, <laughs> uh, as far as his, uh, scheming and his, uh, treacherous ways. Um, but yeah, I, I understand that some people may be a little bit concerned about the darkness of this show. Uh, this there, um, it doesn't seem like there's a great deal of hope here, but this is meant to display that. Um, I feel like th- there is enough of a tether to some hope at the end of this uh, first chapter, these first six episodes, to where I think uh, chapters two and three can really bring out that hope. It's uh, You might see some life uh, kind of get re-injected into some of these characters, starting with the second chapter. But um, you know, do know going into it that this is depicting war. It's depicting... A civil war too which is you know and there are a lot of uh interpersonal relationships with people who fell onto opposite sides so it's a um it's really i think well done in the way that a lot of the comics that i've always gravitated more towards whether it's marvel uh or to uh the idw comics it really plays those cards very very well Uh, And one thing that it does exceptionally well, I think, is it does have this wonderful theme of obsession and desperation. Uh, Every character can be uh, cited with one of those uh, one of those qualities. You have uh, Optimus Prime, who's obsessed with doing what he thinks is right and Megatron obsessed with crushing Optimus Prime. You have um, desperation with some people who just don't want to fight anymore. They they want to try to find a way to to either end this peacefully or live in peace. Um, you have some people who have some really really um, interesting uh, um, obsessions, uh, particularly from Shockwave's character. He's always pulling out these crazy ideas about how to end the war. And it's it's fascinating because it um, it it really shows that you get to a certain point in a battle that sometimes you do forget what it is that you're fighting for. And you sometimes do forget, uh, you know, that what you think is right may end up getting other people hurt. Um, And depending on how much of an iron fist you try to rule things with. Um, you know, what you may end up finding out is, is that you're losing some of your best, uh, you know, some of your best warriors through that too. So it, it's, I think it's a really, really, uh, well-made show. I think, um, the animation style, uh, actually does come from, uh, a couple of series from, uh, 10 or 12 years ago so there is a, a a nice connection to where you have people working on the show that understands the series understands the concept of transformers um, one thing i really like about the animation style is that um, you really do seem to feel the weight of these robots uh, as they're walking or as they're fighting or as they're transforming, you really kind of feel that weight of them. Uh, what's interesting is, is that Hasbro 
uh, sent all of the sketches and all of the design work of the toys themselves to uh, the animators in Japan. And they uh, really made it so that this, you know, the robots look like the toys. They, they transform just like the toys and the vehicles look like the toys. And that's a really, really wonderful thing because I think that was always the one big disappointment that a lot of people had with the Transformer toys in the 80s was that, well, this is cool. You know, it's cool as a toy, but it doesn't really look like the character and the character's cool as a character on the TV show and vice versa. Here, there is synergy, which is uh, always kind of a nice thing. But, um, you know, if you're a Transformers fan, you're probably going to try this out anyway. I, as I said, I was a little surprised that some of the people that I listened to um, were uh, not as optimistic as I thought they might be. Um, some of it is, I think, you know, it seems like every couple of years there is a new Transformers show. Um, and the, uh, there was a concern about the darkness there was a concern about retelling the origins of a lot of things. I think there was some concern about um, just the, for, you know, 13 years now, people have been excited about Transformers movies or Transformers TV shows, and they just don't quite work out for them. Um, thankfully, I've been mostly missing from all of that. Uh, so it's not like I've had a lot of disappointment that has uh, that has proven to be a, a big problem for me. So I very much liked it, uh, it you know, and I, I think it, I think a lot of people are going to say, well, it's not quite perfect. Uh, it'd be nice to see uh, Cybertron not be, you know, dirty and and raining all the time and cloudy and all of that. I'll give you that. I'll you know, granted, I, I will give you that. But uh, but is it perfect? No. But I don't think this, I don't think anything that's got Transformers name on it is ever going to be perfect unless they completely and totally uh, just do the, the original cartoons over again. I think that's why we can never really say, oh, this will, uh, you know, this thing is, you know, this new thing is perfect or this new, you know, version of this thing that we love from the past is perfect is because we're always going to compare it to the original. Uh, I really do didn't so much do that, but I was pleasantly surprised how much, uh, I did see in the show that I thought, Oh yeah, I remember that from, you know, 35 years ago or whatever. So uh, I think this, I think this show does its job well to try to, uh, do the best it can as far as to give, uh, something new to jump onto, but also give all of us old fogies that grew up with the stuff, uh, a lot to hold on to too. So I definitely would say if you're a Transformers fan, give it a shot. Um, if it's not really your thing, then I, I don't blame you for that either. Uh, to me personally though, I do like it. Uh, and if you do watch it, I would just plow through the whole thing because it really is just a two hour movie, uh, that's been broken up into six chapters. So just plow through it. Uh, and then, um, you know, hopefully, uh, you like it as much as I do and, and you get excited like I am for the next chapter, which is Earthrise. Not really sure when it's coming, but, uh, the, but there is a little thing on Netflix that will say Transformers will return in chapters two and three. So, um, Earthrise is the, is the next one. I think kingdom is the third one. So, uh, probably before the end of 2021, we'll see all of that stuff completed. So, uh, but I don't know. I, I think this is, I think this is a pretty good, uh, six little episodes for you, especially if you're a Transformers fan. Um, so coming up here, as I had mentioned, um, Jason, Chuck, and myself, the three of us who do uh, film seizure, you know, we had tried to figure out, well, what can we do to um, do something that's along the lines of film seizure at the movies? Everything is streaming now. Um, we each have, I don't know, several streaming services. So we thought, well, let's try to watch some of these. We'll, we'll have some of these that will be done. Uh, we will be doing some coverage of uh, Fantasia again, which is the um, film festival that runs for a couple of weeks. I think that starts 
uh, about mid August or so. So we may do some of those reviews like this. We may do mostly, uh, written ones. I, it's not really sure quite yet on that, but stay tuned for that. Uh, but yeah, I would just keep, uh, going over the film uh, see everything that we have coming out, uh, see everything that we're doing on there. Um, and like I said, we will have some more of these film seizure streams, of the movies, uh, coming very soon. Uh, additionally, uh, you can go over to, uh, Twitter and to Facebook and follow us, uh, there. We're just there as film seizure. If you search for us on Facebook that way, you'll find us, uh, Twitter. We are literally at film seizure. So, uh, so go over there, follow us, uh, let us know what you think of, uh, of this transformers, uh, war for Cybertron trilogy, uh, chapter one siege. All of that, I think, is part of the title. But uh, let us know what you think of it, if you saw it, uh, what you liked, what you didn't like. It's all valid. You know, your, your opinions are absolutely valid as much as anybody else's. So if you didn't like it, uh, feel free to let me know why. Uh, but uh, so like I said, you can find all of our stuff uh, by just going simply to filmseizure.com, SoundCloud, um, Stitcher, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcast, um, TuneIn, Spotify, and you can even find us over on uh, YouTube. So uh, check out those new episodes of Film Seizure on Wednesdays, new episodes of Monster Mondays, Monster Mondays. And uh, we'll sprinkle out some of these uh, Film Seizure streams, the movies, when we have some stuff to talk about. But uh, so until the next time, uh, don't forget to save me the aisle seat or the end of the sofa, if it were. Yeah, either one's fine. This is the final day of the Autobot Resistance.